I'm Jamie King, and we're going to discuss data modeling with Apache Cassandra. You're probably used to your relational data model, where you basically make a table for every object in your domain. But with data modeling and Apache Cassandra, we model for performance, which actually means we're modeling for how the hardware behaves, which we will study throughout this whole entire modeling process. Here's a slide you've seen before. This is essentially our map between here and creating some create table statements for Apache Cassandra. What we'll discuss in this section is conceptual data modeling, which is essentially taking all the objects in your domain, determining their attributes, and how all of them are related together. Here's an example of conceptual data model. You can see we have a video and an actor and a relationship type in the middle. We'll talk about these in details in the next few slides. This is an abstract view of your domain. When you're doing conceptual data modeling, you don't need to worry about what technology you're modeling for. You just want to look at your domain and say, what are the objects here, how are they related, and what attributes are involved as well. In data modeling, it's good to just stand back and understand all the objects in your domain. Often we just want to jump in and solve the problem, but with the data modeling process, we can step back and say, oh, this is what we're trying to accomplish, this is what we need to store, these are how the objects are related, these are the relationships that are necessary, and so forth. One huge advantage to conceptual data modeling is that anyone can be involved. They don't have to have a technical background. Hopefully you have the product owners, the developers, architects, whoever's going to be on your team to deliver the final product, they can all understand conceptual data modeling because essentially you're just identifying the objects and the relationships. Each object here has their own attributes. So a video has ID, a video has a title, a description, Actors have names, which we've further broken down into other attributes such as first name and last name. You may be thinking, hold on, name is a natural key for an actor. Why didn't we pick a natural key for video? Well, if you think about it, several movies have different remakes throughout the years. For example, Alice in Wonderland. Several versions have come out throughout the years. By the way, Johnny Depp was in a lot of them. Now hold on. Actor names aren't necessarily unique. Well, let's just say in killer video domain, we decided they were. So in general, all objects will have several attributes, or you can think of them like fields. But we're going to further break these attributes down into different attribute types. First of all, there are key attributes. These are the attributes which identify each instance of whatever object they are attached to. Videos have IDs, and actors have names. You may have noticed that name has first name and last name. We call this a composite attribute because this attribute is made up of other attributes. Don't get too carried away with this though, of having attributes have composite attributes, which have composite attributes, which have the, that gets complex. It's just nice to be able to break attributes down into further attributes if necessary. Going back to Alice in Wonderland, is it a comedy or is it a fantasy? Uh, it can be considered both. Notice attributes can have multiple values. We call these multi-valued attributes. You denote these with double circles around the attribute types. It's natural to think about keys as far as objects are concerned. We're used to giving objects such as video a unique ID, but here you can see that we actually need to determine the key of our relationship types. You'll use this later when we get down to the physical data modeling level. Here is an entity relationship model. This is essentially what you can draw on the whiteboard or on some paper, do on a napkin if you want to at lunch, it doesn't really matter. The three main parts of this model are the entity types, the relationship types, and the attribute types, which is just a fancy way of saying objects, relationships, and their attributes. First, you need to identify all of your entity types. In this, you can see we have a video and an actor. Go figure, killer video has videos, killer video has actors. Those are two of the objects in the killer video domain. In between these two objects, we have a relationship type. If you read the relationship from left to right, you read the word on the top instead of the word on the bottom. If you read from right to left, then read the phrase on the bottom. In this case, video features actor, or read the other way, actor is featured by video. One of my favorite actors is Johnny Depp. Go figure, I don't know why. I really like Pirates of the Caribbean. So Pirates of the Caribbean featured Johnny Depp, or you could read it from right to left, Johnny Depp appeared in Pirates of the Caribbean. Arr! Every time two objects participate in a relationship type, 
We call that an instance of the relationship. How many times a particular object can participate in the relationship determines that object's cardinality within the relationship. That was a mouthful. Let me see if I can explain further. For example, here, videos, features, actors. Well, each video will have several actors, and each actor can participate in several videos. For example, Johnny Depp. He was in Pirates of the Caribbean 1, Pirates of the Caribbean 2, so on and so forth. Johnny Depp's in several movies. On the other hand, Pirates of the Caribbean has several actors, such as Kiera Knightley, Orlando Bloom, and also our beloved Johnny Depp. Now you may be thinking, why did we choose M and N here instead of just saying M and M? That makes me hungry for chocolate. Anyway, don't stress it. The reason is, is because every movie can have several actors, but the actor doesn't necessarily participate in the same number of movies as each movie has actors. Yeah, sounds kind of weird, I know. But essentially, the numbers can be different between the two. Fun fact! Did you know where Pirates of the Caribbean had its first showing? Mexico City. The cardinality on that movie has first showing is one to one, meaning each movie only has one first showing. Go figure. The next relationship type of user uploads video, the cardinality for that is one to many. Notice the uploads relationship type also has an attribute of timestamp. The cardinality on our last relationship type is actor appears in video. Notice this is a many-to-many -many relationship type. The way we determine the key of a relationship type is by looking at the cardinality of the relationship type. With the one-to-one -one relationship, you can actually just take the key off of either one of the participating object types. Think about the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean could have an ID of one, and first showing could have an ID of, let's say, A. Well, Pirates of the Caribbean would only show up once in this relationship type, and first showing would also show up once in this relationship type as well. Both IDs in this instance of the relationship will be unique. So it doesn't matter which side you want to pick to represent the unique key for your relationship type. With user uploads video, Users can upload several videos. For example, if I used my account to upload to Killer Video, I could upload 10 videos of my cat. My user ID would show up multiple times in that relationship type. However, each video that I upload would have a unique ID. So in that relationship type, we would take the unique ID off of the actual videos that I uploaded, not off of the user instance, because the user instance will be duplicated for each instance of a video that we upload. Actor appears in video is a little bit tricky because Johnny Depp can appear in several videos and each video can have several actors. Thus, their IDs will show up multiple times in several instances of that relationship type. In order to get a unique instance, we actually have to pull both keys from both sides of the relationship type and combine them together. Here's an example of a weak entity type. Notice the double outlines. Don't make these more complicated than they need to be. In order for an object to exist, the parent object and the weak entity type must also exist. Let's look at an example with this diagram. Video has encoding. If the video disappears, then the encoding disappears with it. That's really all there is to it. All right, are you ready to hit the whiteboard? In this exercise, we have a data model that we need your help filling in. 